Hello, Sweet Tooth here. I hope your day is going well. I'm Welcome back to Dead Secret. Let's try to find out what secret this is. Alright, so I was sitting here before, and I could just run away. I don't, have, I don't even have the option to run away now. That's interesting. I'm not leaving until I figure out what's going on. That a girl. Huh. Dr. Bullard, I have followed your instructions to calibrate the Tempest prognosticator. Your concern was correct. The bottles must be placed from heaviest to lightest to produce accurate results. The actual weight depends on the leech used, so I have to recalibrate every time we want to take a reading. Also, note that recalibration is required if the battery in the base dies. However, the device works as intended. Once the model is aligned precisely with the moon, it may be, then be used to start the lunar dream apparatus safely. Josie. Well, his research is crucial to this story. I wonder if uh, I can get this thing working. Calibrate the device. To scale. Harris Bullard, Daily Log, June 11, 1965. Using the moon as a trigger for the lunar dream apparatus has its problems. The moon must be full, or nearly so. The night must be clear and the process must be started at a very specific time to ensure that the moon is visible from inside the chamber. Josie has been following weather reports and using lunar charts to try and predict days for ideal test conditions, but it's an error-prone process. The data we get back from the weather service just isn't precise enough. Today I hit upon the solution. Well, Bill, will, huh? That's the first uh, spelling grammar, error. spelling error actually. It's not really grammar. We'll build our own weather device. In fact, it's just a missing contraction. In fact, we can base it upon an exceedingly accurate design from a century ago, the Tempest Prognosticator. I have to make some modifications for our purposes, of course. I'm sure that with some tuning, we can build a device that responds exactly to our weather needs. And then we'll need to get some leeches. Harris Bullard built a strange device to track the phases of the moon. How can you get the moonlight inside just this tiny area? It's not, it's not really like too open. You only got three windows. The door is stuck. There are electronics inside and it looks like a battery. Hmm. So are you still here pointing down at that? I swear the guy with the red mask is Harris. He's kind of like pointing out what you need to know. So is he pointing inside the machine? Yeah, he sure is. So there's nothing I can do with it for right now? Must be the device that Josie and Bullard built. Some sort of weather prediction tool. The model of the Earth. Is that the moon? Chapter 4 The Subconscious Mind The human brain is, at some level, not unlike the pot that produces my coffee every morning. It is nothing like your pot of coffee. The water I pour into it is infused with the qualities of the roasted bean. Ah, that 
metaphor is so horrible. The grounds themselves do not pass through the filter, but the liquid that collects in the carafe is no longer simply water. It has been permanently altered. Every part of my body is a sensitive instrument. My skin, my eyes, my muscles, my tongue. If I am a coffee pot, short and stout. If I was a teapot, short and stout, here is my handle and here is my spout. <laughs> Sorry. This stream of physiological information is the water in my conscious mind is the coffee in the carafe. And the sieve, the filter that makes the drink pal palatable, is the subconscious mind. I guess. Marguerite Higgins is my hero. She won a Pulitzer for her reporting in Korea. I went to college because of her. She goes to war zones, marches with the troops. Nothing scares her, and she gets the story. Marguerite Higgins doesn't run from a juicy story just because her life is in danger. Neither will I. Can you please stop calling it a juicy story? Oh, that just feels so weird. I really like the game though, like the actual mechanics of it, functional, like the gameplay mechanics are really nice. Like I can't like walk around normally, you gotta click and point and walk, but it's really nice. November 15th, 1960. Dear Harris, I read in the paper today that you have a smelly butt. Is that true? No, I'm joking. That you received a special award from the College of Ga Groundbreaking Research. I am writing to wish you my sincere congratulations. I've said some things that I regret, but today I wish only to extend good wishes to you and to your future endeavors. Do you know the scene in North by the North scene in North by Northwest when Cary Grant disrupts an art auction? He makes nonsensical bids with the police until the police are called to haul him away. I saw it last summer at the cinema we used to drive to in Logan. It was lonely to go alone, but that scene made me smile. My life feels like that, sometimes. I poke my head up. You poke your head up? And say something crazy every now and then. Just on the off chance that somebody will take me away from all this. I'm no Cary Grant. I'm afraid. I would like to hear from you. Please write back. Sincerely, Cynthia. She misses more? Mm. It sounds more like she misses Cary Grant than she does Bullard. Just be honest about that one. Actually, we'll be over here in a second. Something right there. Okay. It's another thing from the Crystal Cave. I'm going to try to get all of those, then I'll try to read it. The earth is covered in ashes. There's something written here? Fireplace poker. Fireplace has been used recently in the summer. Fireplace broom. Can I take the shovel? It's a series of faint symbols.
Dad took me to Wichita once before he died. We drove for four hours to get there, ate hamburgers, and watched a movie. Then we went home. He never explained, just told me to get in the car. I guess he knew he was going to die. That's sad. I don't know if that's got to do with the game itself, but that's sad. With a mystery. Air Speller, Daily Log, May 24th, 1962. Cynthia called me today. She sounded drunk. Sometimes I think she calls just to get a rise out of me. I maintained my calm this time, declined her invitation to meet, and told her in no uncertain terms that if she was looking for money, she had best look elsewhere. And now I am going to go get drunk myself. Why? What's drunk? What's being drunk help you with? Graham came by my office this morning. He had a strange-looking envelope. It was addressed to me, but had been pushed under his door. It bore no return address, just a single word, woodcutter. I had to run to class and haven't had a chance to open it yet. But, something about it makes me uncomfortable. I hope it's not another love letter from a student. Graham is a weasel. He's never stepped foot in a lab or run an experiment, but he makes it sound like he's the brains behind the old program. Without me, he'd be a washed up the earth, the earth with nothing to his name. Thinks little of Wellington. National recognition for local college. The National Academy, Academy of Sciences announced its annual picks for leaders in science academia on Wednesday. Among the recipients of this prestigious award was our own Oakley College in Logan. The college won recognition for a controversial research paper published by the school's small neuroscience department last year. We are very proud to have our work recognized in this way, said Dr. Graham Wellington, chair of Oakley's Brain Study Program. We are a very small program focused on areas of research that the big schools ignore. We applaud the Academy of Sciences for giving us a chance to prove ourselves. The award-winning the award-winning paper authored by Wellington and Dr. Harris Bullard was written in 1962 but only published last year. <laughs> Titled Accessing Subconscious Waves Through Twist Pair Electro Incola Whoa. Electro encephalography. Electro hmm. Electro encephalography. I almost got it. The high technical paper caused some controversy in the neuroscience community. It was ridiculed by many experts in the field. The paper was a source of some local tumult. Tumult as well. This paper was written entirely by Dr. Bullard, said one Oakley student who did not wish to give his name. Wellington just put his name on it and took all the credit. Bullard, who retired from the school last year, could not be reached for comment. Claim the credit for research paper that Bullard wrote. Really? Really? Why would you do that? Client wishes to keep large items piano unpacked for sale at auction. Do not pack contents of guest bedroom, second floor left side, not owned by client. Client is still looking for a key to first floor study, will provide by 926. You mean that key that I just found in a drawer, like right away? All expensive looking items are to be packed separately for immediate sale. Huh, Cynthia's just trying to make a buck off of him. 
sheet music is scattered all over the floor. Was Bullard a musician? I didn't know that. Some loose flow boards. No, select it. No, select it. I can get this poker wedged under a board. Maybe I can pry it up. There's a hidden space between under the floorboards. Yeah, star, star circle square, right? Yep. Bill, I owe you many thanks for forwarding my request to the New York Times. I think we have the opportunity to tell one of the great science stories of the 20th century and make a considerable sum in the process. The Times is a great first step, but when we are finished, I want to have headlines written about me on the front page of every paper in the country. The key to our success is Harris Bullard's brain research. He has discovered something fundamental about the operation of our subconscious brainwaves, and I believe that he will soon harness this knowledge to build a device whose object is to make men superhuman. Our first task is to procure this device before Bullard can publicize it, and my plans are accomplishing that are already in motion. Once the device is in my hands, I am confident that I can reproduce and improve upon its work, his work. That, Mr. Mitchell, is where you come in. An invention of this magnitude must not be consigned to the boneyard of the academic journal. It deserves praise and recognition from the common man. We will make it the story of the year, and then we will sell the technology to those rich enough to meet our fronts. For now, we wait for Buller to finish the device. Then we will make our move. I look forward to your continued cooperation in this mutually beneficial partnership. Best regards, Graham Wellington. Graham is an asshole. Oh. Safe combination. Well, I gotta go around. Somebody decided to leave a tire piano. But I can't go to the door. Somebody was in a rush to pack this stuff. Cupboard's been mostly emptied. There's one thing way over there. Eyewear with electromagnetic refracting lenses. Hey, nice! He got a patent on it. Uh, you can kind of pause the video if you want to look at that. It's just an abstraction of the patent itself. I'm pretty sure Bullard's not going to tell exactly what he made. A coffee can that's frozen shut. I can hear something rattling inside. Okay. 
Well, let's go uh, heat it up. No, where are you walking? Go right there. What are you talking about? That's a good way to defrost it. Got it. What's inside? Looks like a blank sheet of paper. Is there something special about it? I don't know. Interesting. Harris Bullard, I am Woodcutter. You have five days. I am coming. Bring it. I'll whoop you. Here's a list of supplies this week. I know you're angry that I haven't paid in a month, but please wait a little bit longer. I have some money coming, and I'll be able to pay you soon. Leeches. Buttered old and money. Harris Bullard, I am woodcutter. You will complete your research and then hand it to me, or we can discuss the South Pacific in 1944. Huh. Dear Harris, Happy New Year. I suppose I am wasting my time by writing you again, but the new year always makes me think about the past. I was very upset when you did not respond to my last letter. I was told that you refused my calls at the college. I understand that you are still angry, and for that I cannot fault you. Who was this in? Oh, Harris. But unlike you, I have gotten past our little meltdown. I have grown to see it as the inevitable terminus of our relationship. Something that had to happen sooner or later, like spilt milk, as they say, it's not worth crying over. But I do have a request. I will make it plain, Harris. I need money. Some of my investments went bad last year, and with Kennedy in the White House, soon the others will certainly fail. You may hate me now, but I cannot believe you will consign me to a life of poverty. Somewhere deep down inside you, under that mask you wear in your daily life, I know you must still feel something for me. Please, say you'll help me. Just this once, put down the mask and trust your feelings. Humbly and sincerely, Cynthia. Of her bullard, but wants money for her gambling debts. Really? There's enough here to feed a person for months. Are you sure? The handle turns, but the door wound up open. Something is blocking it on the other side. What is this door to?
pitch black down there. Not worth risking a fall with a broken arm. I'll need to find a light. That was full of leeches. This is disgusting. Yeah, but look at this guy. He's like uh, doing the aerobics. Crystal Cave. I guess the leeches are a recent addition. Bottle, the letter is printed on the label. Cold winter increases risk of exposure. With temperatures below 20 for most of the state, experts warn that deaths of, from hypothermia are on the rise. Several deaths have already been attributed to the cold this year, including two hikers found south of Ottawa and a man in Wichita. December is one of the deadliest months, said Charles Manning, Chief Medical Examiner at Ottawa PD. People don't realize how cold it's gone and go unprepared. Go out unprepared. Profound hypothermia occurs when a person's core body temperature drops below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. However, scientists do not yet understand why the deep cold kills some people and spares others. According to Manning's, men are at higher, greater risk than women, and the cold is particularly dangerous for thin people. Identifying death by hypothermia can be a challenge, said Manning. If the victim is found in the snow with his clothes half off, then we know. But sometimes bodies aren't recovered until much later, often without a mark on them. Scientists do not understand why some victims of hypothermia remove their clothing, a phenomenon called paradoxal undressing. Really? While well, others do not. Last March, the body of a 30-year-old woman who had been missing for several days was found near Topeka. After failing to identify the cause of death, the coroner chalked it up to exposure to the elements. The easiest way to save, stay safe is to not go out alone in the cold, especially at night, said Manning. If you must go out, make sure that other people know where you're headed and dress warmly. If you're in a car accident, stay in the car. Don't try to hoof it to the next town on your own. How do you know that's newer than the sink? I mean, they look exactly the same. It's like you got a two for one deal. Huh? What was that? Why is that?
and now it's gone. That was weird. President Johnson boned up reports on correspondence at the LBGJ Ranch today, pending the arrival of cabinet office officials. Tashit cooperation of the local police. I haven't seen Tashit in a long time. It means quiet. Quiet cooperation of the local police. That's why Tasha Turn is a quiet person. If Woodcutter killed Bullard, he was pretty sneaky about it. No marks on the body, no sign of a struggle. Coroner ruled it was pancreatic failure. How do you kill a man without leaving a mark on him? And why return to the scene of the crime? I don't know. Hey, one of the masks, masks are missing. That's strange. There's a little door now. Or that's a little small knob. There we go. A bottle, the letter E is printed on the label. Interesting. Wait, is he in the painting now? That's him in the painting? What, what's he doing in there? Oh. And the monkey's up there. Somebody must have put it here. Woodcutter? Left 20, right 50, left 10. There we go. Lunar Dream Apparatus altering the brain to achieve permanent idiophocus. 
idea of folks. William Benjamin Carpenter's work, describing the Carpenter effect over a century ago, continues to baffle psychologists today. We have struggled to understand the linkage between the conscious and the subconscious, particularly the ways in which the subconscious mind seems to wield special knowledge of which the conscious mind is unaware. Our research attempts to give the conscious mind unfiltered access to all the information stored in the subconscious by creating an artificial bridge between the two. We have done this in a rudimentary way with a set of lens that refract light by tracking alterations in brain waves, but a more robust, robust connection requires permanent alteration of the brain. The Lunar Dream Apparatus combines engineering, psychology, neuroscience, and a bit of physics to create just such a connection. In order to give the subject some control over their own subconscious, we have chosen the moon as a mental mnemonic. After undergoing treatment in, lun treatment in the lunar dream apparatus, the subject's conscious and us conscious, subconscious, are merged to... Man, how many times are you going to keep repeating conscious and subconscious? Merged whenever a full moon is visible. This paper describes the construction of the apparatus, its function, and the details of our research. In data recorded from our first test subject, co-author Josephine Herrera. This must be what a woodcutter was after, the lunar dream apparatus. Joe, this is the only remaining copy of our research materials. I destroyed the rest. Take this and get out of here. After I'm gone, they'll turn this house up, upside down looking for answers. Josie, I know about the secret room behind your wardrobe. If you've stashed anything there, you must get rid of it. I've already cleaned out the freezer. I'm asking and counting on you. Take the files, destroy the machine, and get out, out of here. Well, the machine's not destroyed, right? I don't know. Search the basement freezer. Explore Josie's secret room. I got a third bottle. Wait a second, I think I saw something. Go back in there for a second. Yeah, look at that. How was your conference in Chicago? I can just imagine you prancing through the streets like Gene Kelly, swinging on lampposts and declaring yourself to be of such, such grand importance. Do you remember your lines? Was the audience raptured? Oh, my dear. Harris, did you find a little chickadee to take back to your hotel this time? While you were gone, I had old Sam come over and change the locks. You left a few things here which I have relocated to the curb for a convenient pickup. I do admit that a few of your possessions may have ended up on the, in the street, but in all honesty, they do not look out of my place there. Do you remember the last thing you said to me, Harris? It was almost in passing as you slammed the door, but I heard it very clearly. You said, you haven't got the guts. Well, I do have the guts, you rat, and I'm throwing you out. Throwing you, your shabby things, in these last six wasted years of my life into the rubbish bin. If I catch you around here again, I will alert the police with the sound of my shotgun. Forever yours. Wow, she has a shotgun. Hmm. 
Why would you say forever yours when you threw out your husband like that? What's that about? I mean, you threw your husband out like that, and all of a sudden it's like, forever yours. Like, are you, really? Are you sure? It really doesn't seem like forever yours. Huh. What's this about? Well, that's strange. Well, there's a battery. Dear Diary, got a letter from the Herreras today. They're good parents, even if they aren't my real parents. They sent a letter to me at Dr. Bullard's address, which means they know I'm living here. I wonder if they are worried. The whole town seems to have decided the only reason I'd stay here is that I'm sleeping with them. I don't care what the small-minded bumpkins around here think, but I hope the Herreras aren't worried. Maybe soon I can tell them what I'm actually up to. Also, Bobby Sawyer gave me another draft of his novel. It's really weird, but I think it's pretty good. I've been typing up his manuscripts on Dr. Bellard's typewriter. I'm fixing mistakes and making little edits as I go. When he's done, he's going to submit the typed version to Amazing Stories or Worlds of Tomorrow. I hope they publish it. I don't know if magazines will look even look at work by a black author. Probably not back then, but I mean it's like 60s, so pretty close to when they got civil rights. I told them to use a pen name. Tomorrow we run the first live test of the Lunar Dream apparatus. Dr. Bullard doesn't think it's going to work the first time. I hope it does. I volunteered to be the first test subject. Maybe after the treatment, I'll be able to understand what happened to Dad. Hmm. Why is it so quiet? What do I got anyways? Man, it's quiet. It's like really quiet.
thought for sure something was going to be there. I doubt it. Yeah, I never checked inside the uh, globe. Nope. Nothing there. Before I go down into the basement, I actually want to go back to the other uh, thing. It feels like I could have done something with it. This thing right here. The bottom marked with the letter B, there's a leech inside. You need to find the rest of the bottles, fill them with leeches, and then find the correct order. Really? Huh. I filled each bottle with a leech. Really? Oh, this is strange.
I need to figure out the right order to these bottles. The right order is probably be dead. <laughs> Well, I guess I gotta go to the basement. But, uh. I'm gonna have to cut the video here. I wanna thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. And I hope you have yourself a good day. And this is Sweet Tooth signing off. I love you.